Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. I would say the first release candidate is getting closer this week, uh, but the first release candidate went out earlier today because this video was a little bit late this week. So 0.15 RC1 is up. Go check it out if you're an early adopter, want to get in on that kind of thing. Using the release candidates is one of the best ways to get the stable release to actually be stable. If anything in your current games breaks in the release candidate, the next couple of weeks is our opportunity to fix that before it goes out in the stable release. Speaking of, you can see the 0 0.15 milestone on GitHub, which also includes work like an upgrade to WGPU 23, some of which will happen over the course of the release candidate. In the meantime, we've got plenty of PRs to cover and community showcases to explore. Starting off with async assets. Bevy's asset system is async by nature, but is most often used in sync contexts, such as in a Bevy system. 15.9.13 adds a method for asynchronously waiting for an asset to load. This makes it easier to use in contexts that integrate really well with async, like in Bevy's async tasks. The new method on asset server, wait for asset, returns a future that suspends until the asset associated with the given handle either finishes loading or fails to load, allowing you to await it. And the required components migrations look like they're finishing up. In 15.8.98, Bevy UI was ported to required components, which was one of the last major required components migrations. And in 15.975, the style fields were merged into Node, paving the way for future improvements in Bevy UI's approach to styles. There will obviously be a migration guide for all of these over the course of the release, but the TLDR is that style is gone and those fields are now just on Node. Speaking of required components, Spatial Bundle has been deprecated in 15.830 as part of the required components work, and usages have been replaced with the transform and visibility components. Both of these bring along their own required components, so a transform will, for example, insert a required global transform component. Observers are also continuing to get improvements. In 15.8.11, the trigger components method, which allows observers to know which components trigger them, was implemented. And in 15.7.02, we introduced a few new APIs for inserting a batch of new entities. This mirrors an already existing set of APIs, insert or spawn batch, with versions that only insert. At the end of the day, this allows you to batch insert entities with their components. And what exactly are curves? Well, now there's documentation, so you can find out what they are and how to use them. The documentation here is really great because it can sometimes be easy to get lost in machinery, especially when working with abstract mathematical concepts. And from the curves working group to the bevy picking upstreaming, the new Bevy Picking Crate already supports UI and sprite picking, and 15.8.0.0 brings mesh picking to the supported backends. This also brings support for performing ray casts on meshes. And speaking of working groups, the Bevy CLI working group has been developing a linter specifically for Bevy programs. As of this issue, the fifth lint has been created, which is a lint that warns against components, resources, and events that don't implement Reflect. Functionally, Reflect is used by a variety of programs, including Bevy Inspector eGUI, and you almost always want to actually implement Reflect, but it's really easy to forget. So it's a great candidate for the Bevy linter. And of course, Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And last week became very release candidate focused, which makes sense because the release candidate went out earlier today. And first up in our showcases this week, we've got a molecular visualizer proof of concept. This is MOL, M-O-L, which visualizes linear alkanes specifically, which apparently are chains of carbons with hydrogens. Next up, we've got some hexagon landscape. This is hex terrain generated where the hex corner height is based on the average of the neighboring three cells of the corner with a little bit of a twist, which has resulted in this kind of golf ball-ish landscape. And Wasabi 16 is a bevy Wasm-based fantasy console that can load cartridges. We've referenced it in other issues, and there have been a number of different updates since then, including controller input and various color palette improvements. Radiance Cascades are always a hot 2D topic. These are breaking lamp chains in a game that uses Bevy ECS and Radiance Cascades to implement the lighting. And this is Settletopia, which is a multiplayer open world settlement slash kingdom building game. This has a quite long, uh, maybe about two minute video over on YouTube that shows off some of the graphics, some of the behaviors, and some of the things you can do in the game. And this is Jarl, which I always enjoy seeing. This game looks so good. The author says, this is when testing new hit flash shaders turns into madness. Uh, and the character you can see here is just kind of uh, burning down the entire forest. <laughs> 
Bevy no standard progress is continuing. This is loading a PNG sprite and bouncing it around with the velocity modified by the arrow keys. This is running on UEFI with no operating system via QEMU. And inverse kinematics are always fun. This is an implementation of inverse kinematics for a robotics arm simulator. And from robotics to UI, this is a set of UI screens that can show lists of items with filters. And some really cool, exciting progress on this game that we've covered before. This is a supercut showcasing newly implemented decal and particle effects. The video includes a commission soundtrack, so definitely check it out for the audio. Up next, we've got Vellist. This is a tracing animation using Vellist, an interactive typist content creator using Velo and Bevy. It's reminiscent for me of a hold to interact pattern. And up next, we've got some PVP boxing. This is the first player versus player fight in this boxing game. The physics are being handled by PhysX or P-H-Y-S capital X. And up next, we have a brief look at an RPG style character customizer. This is an in-game character customizer. And uh, ignore the UI, it's intentionally horrendous. Coming in second to last, we've got a Chrome-like UI dev tool, which is a take on a Chrome-inspired dev tool using eGUI, where you can set the flex direction, align items, margin, padding, border, and other things. And finally, for our showcases, we've got a Vulkan RTX backend for Bevy. This is a work in progress backend for Bevy. The plan for it is to be a configurable testbed, for ray tracing demos and research. It's always really cool to see how modular Bevy is be a benefit for this sort of thing. And I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes in the future. And now for the crate releases, we've only got a couple of crate releases this week, starting off with Voxy, a new voxel engine for Bevy with high performance meshing. Using Voxy, you can now easily load in .vox files, which are magic voxel files, including lighting and emissive materials. Magic Voxel, if you're not aware, is a GPU-based voxel art editor. And next up, we've got Space Editor 0.6. Space Editor is an editor for scenes and prefabs for the Bevy engine. It allows you to create, modify, save, and load levels and prefabs in a GUI-based way. Space Editor 0.6 brings Bevy 0.14 support, a new pretty UI, and more. There are quite a few changes over in the change log, so definitely go check that out if this kind of editor is interesting for you. And finally, we saw it earlier in the showcases. This is the Chrome-like UI inspector called Bevy UI Inspector, now released as a crate. And that's it for this week, although all of the pull requests that were merged this week are listed on the website, as well as the pull requests that were both opened and issues that were opened, if you're looking to get a little bit deeper into contributing. That's it for this week. Next week should be pretty exciting with the release candidate. Hope you have a great rest of your week, and I'll see you in the next one.